Good Friday morning to everybody. I hope everybody is well. I hope everybody had a, a very productive week. And I hope you have awesome plans for the weekend. And you are going to do something fun and exciting and relaxing. I don't know what I'm going to do for the weekend. <laughs> um, I know that I have... Uh, some major plans coming up in the next few weeks and I have to start preparing for that. Um, I also know that I have some serious catching up to do on some paperwork and um, things for my business. I do not plan to work the entire weekend. The other thing is the restaurant that my husband and I were attempting to go to uh, last weekend on a Sunday, I think we're gonna try to try to go and check it out um, Saturday. So we'll have to let you all know how that goes. So anyway, I hope everybody have a great day. It is early in the morning. I'm headed to work. I am getting charged, and it is about 83 degrees this morning. Um, still a little warm for me not you know blazing or whatever but um, you know as you get out the shower and everything like that it takes a minute for your body to adjust to the temperature so I'm just looking around because I'm thinking about you know how much our environment changes you know things change around us some things we notice and some things that we don't and they have built this very beautiful um i'm gonna say these are condos uh or some type of luxury apartments right here where i live um gorgeous architecture the colors are um, very neutral not too overwhelming and they did an excellent job in addition to that some of the in addition to that, some of the um, the the land that's right here uh, is being used for um, to build uh, strip centers or an area where businesses can come in and things like that. And that's a good thing. I was, you know, where I live at one time, you know, in my childhood, this was like one of the areas that was well to do. You know, if you could afford to get a place over here, then you know you you were doing pretty good for yourself and things like that and i think that you know over time you know much like a lot of areas in the in different cities um the area started to decline and you started to see uh homelessness and prostitution and things like that and i mean it didn't get really really bad at least not the stretch that i'm on um but you could definitely see the decline in the class um of people that moved over here and um, the activity that was transpiring and things like that so um, I'm glad to see the area starting to kind of come back up and starting to flourish um, especially considering there's a nice cluster of apartments that are over here and so you you know you want to live in an area that is compatible with the lifestyle that you desire for yourself and for your family and you know we didn't move over here to try to keep up with the joneses or anything like that we moved over here because um you know at the time my daughter was about to go to college i was about to have surgery there was a lot going on in my life we needed to downsize but i needed to feel safe because i was going to be for six weeks i was going to be uh off my uh off my feet and uh, kind of out of commission for a little while and home alone quite a bit and i just wanted to I wanted to feel safe and it's not that we couldn't have felt safe where we were living but um where we the area where we moved from was primarily um houses and they had some uh, complexes and things like that over there but they were severely overpriced especially for what you were getting and it just wasn't worth it so we wanted to make sure that you know where we moved was budget friendly um, it was the right size for what we needed and also, um, you know, for safety reasons. 
but anyway, I'm just, you know, just looking around. It's amazing. I was telling, um, it was a guy that I ran into when we were walking the trail. And um, I think I cut our conversation out of the, the video footage that I posted the day that this happened. But he's an older guy. And um, he talked about how he uh, was raised in California, um, in L.A., um, but that he lived here for a good portion of his life and then he was involved in the whole oil and gas um, fiasco that was going on as far as, you know, he lost quite a bit of money and, you know, things like that. And I think he and his wife eventually moved away. And so he was telling us that, you know, they, they're living in the area where we are now, but they're only living over here because they're in the process of building a house in Galveston. So he he basically is calling Texas his home and that he's come back um, and he's, you know, settling here and everything in, in his retirement. And it's neat to have a conversation with someone who can relate to the things that you experienced when you were growing up because it got pretty nostalgic for me, um, you know, to, uh, talking to this man. We're complete strangers, happen to run into each other on the trail that my husband and I were walking and we you know we were talking about the area and so he made same, some of the same comments that i just made to you and it was just interesting to you know to meet somebody he had to be um wow i wouldn't say twice my age but he you know he's he's up there in age and he's definitely earned his retirement um he's worked for a really long time in uh, oil and gas and things like that but anyway my point was that he made me kind of homesick and I'm already home you know it was it was so special for me to share stories about how the city has changed and some of the landmarks that are gone and some of the things that you know that I enjoyed as a kid and, and stuff like that and for my husband to have a a front row seat to the conversation and to really understand what Houston means to me. Um, I wanted to come home after I left for a really long time. My husband was in the military, so it was not feasible for us to do so. Um, the moment that he was in transition and was able to, and I was able to uh, come home, that is definitely what I wanted to do. And he agreed to come here to Houston. He didn't have any family. He didn't know anybody. The only connection that he had to Houston was his dad was a shrimper. And he used to, uh, I believe, the, sh the shrimp boat that he was on frequented the Galveston area. Um, I don't know if at that time they had the, um, the port or, you know, I'm not sure how that was done. But he doesn't remember anything. But his mother tells stories of how she brought him out here as an infant, um, you know, to, to visit with his dad. When, when his shrimp boat pulled into Galveston. And so that is the only connection that he has to Texas. Well, now he has a sister that lives here. He had another sister that was attempting to, to move here, but that's her husband was in the military and that just wasn't the plan for them. So um, they wind up not moving here, but they definitely visited. And they visited during the summer when it was like the hottest here in Houston. And it was unfortunate because that is his sister that has sickle cell. And, you know, if you know anybody who has sickle cell, you understand what the heat could potentially do to their body. And we just made sure that she stayed hydrated, she stayed indoors. You know, and then when the sun went down, we kind of went out and hung out and things like that. We didn't do a whole lot. Um, she did um, have, it have to have a um, crisis, you know, a small crisis while she was here. But for the most part, uh, we enjoyed their company. They were here for two weeks. And so, anyway, um, for him to come to Houston with no family, you know, it was definitely a situation. And he was young. I mean, we were young. But um, for me, it, age wasn't an issue because this is where I grew up. So, but for him being a young man and he's a, you know, father, he's a husband, and, um, you know he it, all this was new to him <coughs> so but i tell you now i talked to my husband he's definitely a houstonian because i talked to my husband 
and you know he doesn't see us living anywhere else he's come here and the funny thing is when we moved here when i left here i was not driving i did not know how to drive i didn't have my license i couldn't tell you the first thing about operating a motor vehicle um i barely rode the bus and it I didn't primarily start riding the bus until I graduated high school and I was in my own place and I was going to TSU. And so my husband is actually the person who taught me how to drive. And I think I mentioned this once before, but I'll have to do like a little story time so y'all can uh, hear how my husband taught me how to drive. And so I think I'll probably do like a little mini series or something on that, little stories of things that ever happened with me and my husband um, because we basically grew up together. Um, I had just turned 20 and, um, you know, I, we were living together and in, in our own place and everything. And so we, you know, we became adults together. We, you know, raised our children and things like that. And, you know, we learned how to be uh, so much, not just um, to ourselves but to each other and so anyway uh, he, he came here got acclimated in no time because when I tell you having have not having driven in the city of Houston and then coming back as an adult with a driver's license trying to learn how to drive in the city of Houston I was I was petrified. My husband got on 16, he got on 288, he got on 45, you name it. If it's a, if it's here in Houston, my husband was driving on it. He was not intimidated, he was not bothered. He learned about the city of Houston so fast and learned where stuff was and we got to talking and had to go different places and do different things. And I would say to him, "Well, how did you find that?" He was like, I was driving and I, to him it was just like whatever you know and I'm like oh my god I could never I could never the fact that he championed 16 was enough the loop it was funny because um one time he came home and he was so mad I don't know where he was going or what was going on but he came home and he was ticked off and I was like what is wrong with you he's like the traffic is just so bad. It is horrible. And these people don't know how to drive. And the man who created the 610 loop, find him. Just find him. <clears throat> I want somebody to find the architect who designed the 610 loop. And then we are going, we are going to stone him because it makes no sense for a freeway to be that crazy. And I was I was just laughing so hard because I'm like, now you see why I don't like to drive. You see, you do you see? why i do not like to get on houston freeways because they can be very confusing and they can be very intimidating and then on top of the fact that uh the people act like they do not know how to drive it's frustrating because it's like you know there's no uh uh courtesy i was trying to think of like what would you call it but there's no there's no courtesy you know if somebody's trying to get over or whatever people will sometimes will speed up to keep you from getting over if um if you're driving and you're trying to keep your distance so you don't run in the back of people they'll they'll people will jump over in front of you and um with no blinker or no indication whatsoever that you know they need to get over on more than one occasion i'm tell you the craziest thing that happened to me on more than one occasion i have been driving in the lane that's probably closest to the curb or it doesn't matter but i have been driving in my lane there's a lane next to me and an outer lane or inner lane or whatever and somebody will come clean from way over in the furthest lane and i'm trying to go straight and they will turn from the third lane make a turn directly in front of me 
And if it were not for the fact that I keep a safe distance when I'm driving behind people, I would not have had time to stop. I would have hit them. They would have hit me. Something would have happened, but we would we would have had an accident. Fortunately, I've been in a situation where when this has happened, there wasn't, if somebody was behind me, they weren't close enough to me where they didn't see what was going on or at, or at least see what was coming and had time to stop. So I would have been hit from behind and I, there would have been a collision, you know, in front of me. And so it's, you know, it's a wonder I still drive because some of the stuff that's been happening to me, I'm sitting, sometimes I'm sitting there like, what just happened? You know, what was that? So I don't know. I hear YouTubers, it's funny because I hear YouTubers complain about people driving in their cities too. Um, but in some of these instances, the cities are not as large as Houston. And the fact that since Katrina, our population has exploded. We we as a city are are we're imploding because there are so many people here. We have enough land and we have enough room and they're steady building houses and apartments and things like that. And the jobs are here and that's what's drawing them. But we just have so many freaking people, grocery stores and the freeway traffic and you know, some of the um well, the restaurants and the, you know, a lot of times, you know, you go to eat and go to, you know, out for entertainment and things like that. It's just so crowded. And it's like, what in the world? Because I'm just not accustomed to that. You know, I'm not saying I love people and things like that, but sometimes that's the reason I just kind of stay home. Cause, and I know a lot of people is re probably going to watch this video and be like, oh, you need, you, you shouldn't be like that because, you know, then you, they're keeping you from living your life. No, they're not keeping me from living my life. I am making a decision to not stress myself out over being in social situations that drive me up the wall. <laughs> that's what that is. When I want to go out, I go out. But I, a lot of times have chosen to stay home because maybe I'm not in the mindset or maybe I'm not in the emotional place to deal with just so much going on at one time. So um, anyway, I do enjoy my life. I have fun. And right now <laughs> I'm about to go to work. So I'll catch y'all a little bit later. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to vlog anything while I'm at work. Probably not because I usually can't. But I definitely will see you after work. Don't know what the day holds. I do know I need to catch up with my son because I have something I need to do for him. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. We'll see you later on, okay? Bye. It's Friday. You ain't got no job. <laughs> I'm glad I'm off work. What's up, party people? It is knockoff ships work. This girl is headed out. They have taken the chains off and it is time for me to go home. Woo! I am too pooped to party. How y'all doing? How did your day go? Did you have an uneventful day? Did you have an uneventful week? Did you learn anything this week? That's going to be one of my new questions. What did you learn this week? I think as individuals, we have to purpose ourselves to grow as much and as often as we can sometimes it hurts and sometimes it doesn't so what did you learn this week well for me one thing that i learned this week is that i have to appreciate myself more than what i do I am constantly finding myself in situations where other people recognize things in me that they insist have been there all the time. And it is definitely a situation where it's not that I don't believe in myself and it's not that I don't see what they see per se. Uh, sometimes I don't, I don't uh, see what they see because I am in an uncomfortable situation like say for example learning a new role learning a new task or whatever and so when you find yourself challenged sometimes it's hard to see yourself doing a good job because you're so critical of the mistakes that you make when because you're going through the learning process so that's what I learned this week is that I have to appreciate myself more 
and allow myself to see things in myself that other people see in me from a, from a positive standpoint. I, I get a lot of compliments on my um, deductive reasoning. I get a lot of compliments on how thorough I am with my work. I get a lot of compliments on um, the attention to detail that I pay, um, the fact that I'm a critical thinker, um, just a lot of different things, not just about my personality, but, you know, regarding the quality of work I do. So for me, that's huge because affirmation is awesome. It is definitely something that as human beings, we um, feed off of, you know, it is uh, learned um, for us to respond to affirmation, especially when it's um, coming from somewhere else, we have a tendency, it's a learned behavior, we have a tendency to respond positively to it. And so, um, you know, compliments and uh, being given more responsibility because uh, your superiors are confident that you will be able to complete the task and complete it in a timely manner, you know, what have you. So that's what I learned this week. It is an absolutely beautiful day. It is definitely um, hot again here in Houston. That is the nature of the season. Uh, kitties have, you know, some of them have transitioned back to school. Some of them will be transitioning next week. Uh, parents are trying to get, um, set some guidelines so that they can begin to um, kind of adjust schedules and get everybody back on track and focused and things like that so you have a more structured week. So um, I don't know. I'm just in a really good space right now. I don't have any concerns. I don't have any stresses or stressors I'm good to go loving the weather um, I am in my air-conditioned vehicle hello <laughs> I might not be loving it so much if I were walking out on these streets so I am headed to pick up my son and my daughter I got a couple errands I need to run a few things I need to do for them and I'm looking forward to spending time with my children. Um, they always have me cracking up laughing. I'm not really certain whether I'll be able to get them on camera, but we'll see. So um, we'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. Uh, I am gearing up for vacation. There's a few things that I need to be um, looking at for myself. There's a a few things that I want to uh, purchase to kind of get myself ready. So I'll holler back at back at y'all in a little bit. Bye. So what's up, everybody? I'm back, and um, we uh, went ahead and ordered from U Burrito, U Burrito, or something like that. I hope. from U Burrito, U Burrito, something like that. It's a place down West Palmer. And I did a screenshot of the, I got two tacos and I did a screenshot of the tacos that I get, that I got. And the taco that I got, this one is called the Tasty Tofu Taco. And it has tofu, um, black beans, corn, uh, look like some um, green onion and bell pepper and I already took a bite I'm gonna go ahead and do a taste test on screen for you and it has I don't know what they're doing to the shells but it had a really good uh, flavor so anyway so I'm gonna do a taste test now for you mm. This is really good. 
I'm not really sure. Y'all forgive me for talking with my mouth full. But I'm not really sure like what seasoning they're using. But the roasted corn is really coming through. You know, black beans and whatever they marinated the tofu in is really, really good. And it has, it's like a really um, nice balance of flavors between the natural flavors of the ingredients that they're using, a little oil um, that I'm sure they sauteed everything in, and then um, whatever they had on their grill when they heated up the uh, tortilla shells. And these are in a white corn tortilla. And this next one is called... Um, a tree huggers uh, taco and this has um, avocado um, it said that it had a uh, I do see some more roasted corn I see jicama some <clears throat> I, this it said that it had I'm going to go back to their menu because I really want to tell you what's on this. It said that it had um, some type of slaw, coleslaw on it. And I don't know if it's the jicama slaw or what. But it definitely has um, uh, some type of slaw, avocado. This is in corn tortilla too. Uh, the roasted corn. It looks like pico de gallo. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the taste test, but I will uh, put all the, um, I'll put the name of the uh, taco. Actually, I'm going to take off a piece of this avocado because this is just a lot of avocado on here. Actually, when you think about it, the amount of food that they put on this um, taco is really enough for two tacos. What's under here? So, um, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and taste this. I don't know how I'm going to do this because this is just a lot of food in this burrito. I mean, in this taco. So I might not get the avocado because it's so much of everything else. Hmm. I don't know what that is. There's something in there besides the avocado. Oh. Okay. Because what this is, it is the it's um it's making it creamy, almost like the consistency of um refried beans. It says that it has fresh avocado topped with a cottage, and I'm going to have to look that up, cheese. Um, this is supposed to be a tree hugger, tree hugger, so I don't know if it's vegan. Um, also has roasted corn dressed with uh, garlic aioli and a jicama slaw drizzled with a serrano ranch. And this is a flour tortilla shell. It looks like the corn tortilla shell that they um that they serve the other one with. So you got avocado slices, the cottage cheese, um, roasted corn dressing, garlic aioli, jicama slaw drizzled with serrano ranch, and flour tortilla. So. I was trying to find out so 
I was trying to find out what this Cotija, and I may be pronouncing this way off. It's spelled C O T I J A cheese. And I was trying to see if this was actually cheese. Y'all know how I've been feeling about cheese lately, so yeah, it's actually cheese. They said it's made with hard cow's milk cheese, it's a hard cow's milk cheese that originated from Mexico. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and eat it. I haven't had cheese in a little while. I had some sour cream or whatever, but I'm not too bothered by it. Um, right now I'm going to eat it. I know I had been eating cheese lately because I was just kind of grossed out by everything that was going on. But this has this, um, taco with this cheese on it and the avocado and all the jicama slaw and all of that it just has a really good flavor the cheese is not bad and i guess i don't know who knows i i'm i'm not saying that i'll never eat cheese i just hadn't been eating cheese because it had after watching the video i was a little grossed out Mhm. Mm I'll tell you what. They sure enough give you money's worth. They put plenty of um, stuffing. I mean, all that that you have plenty of ingredients. And I had to take off. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I had to take off this big old hunk of avocado because there's one the same size on the other side. So you get plenty of food for what you pay for it. This was only uh, $2.99 for this taco, and it's really equivalent to two. So it was pretty good. But anyway, so if y'all have not eaten at uh, U Burritos, U-B-E-R-R-I-T-O, Fresh Mex, it's a Tex-Mex place. Um, you ought to check them out. We actually ordered through DoorDash. So um, if you haven't tried out, tried them out, you need to try them out. See what you what you like. It's kind of like a cross between um, Chipotle because they do have bowls and they got burritos, but they have other things too. So anyway, that's gonna do it for me for tonight. I have already started pulling off some of my layers because <laughs> I'm ready ready to just relax for the night. Um, hadn't really checked uh, all of my email. I'm uploading a video now. I am going through um, all of my subscriptions on YouTube. And I am checking out like any new videos and stuff that they have released. I'm clicking to add them to my watch later list. And then after um, I get through eating, I'm going to go and grab me a bath, a glass of wine. And watch some YouTube until... I get tired and I'm ready to go to sleep. So anyway, it's been great with you all. I know most of my hair has been cut off for the last part of this video, but it's been great chilling with you all. I look forward to my making my video for you tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is Saturday and it's going to be August 19th. I do have a few things to do. I wind up not doing um, anything with the kids because when I got there, uh, my son and daughter had got kind of got together and they made all these plans for um, tonight. And so they're, they usually on Fridays have game night, but they're getting together and they're actually going to have movie night. So um, I'm excited for them because I know that they really enjoy spending time with each other. So that's what they're doing. <coughs> I hooked up with them um, all for a hot second. And then I headed on back home. And um, y'all, excuse me. Y'all know I was just eating. Um, then I headed on back home. But tomorrow, you know, I got to get with it. I got to uh, get some things taken care of. I need to put a few things on my to-do list and actually get them done. The last few weeks, I've been putting stuff on my to-do list, but I have not been getting everything done. So anyway, we got to make it happen. So I appreciate y'all tuning in. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. And we want you all to love yourself, love somebody else. And until next time, take care. Bye.
Say again. What kind of burrito did you give me? Um, the burrito that I got you actually has cod and chicken, and it just, it's like a mixture of a whole bunch of things. I'll have to pull you up got the cod. You got fish, chicken, and it's uh, a bunch of vegetables with um, sauces. I'll have to pull up the menu to actually tell you exactly what all is in it. But. That's a pretty big burrito. Mm. Mm. Got some taste to it too. Yeah, it should have a little kick to it because yeah, I got, got you. A little, um, a little, you know, a cilantro mixed in with something. Yeah. Looses it up. It's good. I got you like a. It's some type of. Um, Sauce. I have to. I hate that I didn't remember exactly what it is <clears> that I that I ordered. Oh, but oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I bit something that was a a pepper, maybe. Mm, maybe add something to it. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, Uberitos. I don't know if you remember seeing them down West Timer. Burritos. U B. Uberitos. The the new one down. Um, well, it's on West Timer. West Timer going. I don't know. It just said West Timer. Okay. But um, I'm glad okay. you like it. So can you taste the fish? Is that uh, it? No, I didn't see. I didn't taste no fish. Okay, it, it has. Something else that you know, you like to kill me with peppers first. <laughs> it has a. Uh, well, it definitely has cod and it has chicken and then all <laughs> the other stuff. I'll have to get the menu and um, pull it up for you, and tell you. I don't even have a sauce with this in it. Yeah. No, because the sauce is on the inside. That's what it is. It's something. <laughs> mm. 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 Mm-hmm. You got the fish that time? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I'm glad you like it. I'm about to go get the ingredients for you. Okay. So, in your burrito, you have beer battered cod uh, um, is wrapped in a jalapeno cheddar tortilla mm-hmm. and you got grilled chicken mm-hmm. cilantro lime rice mm-hmm. sauteed mushrooms sauteed spinach pinto beans mm-hmm. uh, pico de gallo mm-hmm. sour cream shredded cheese blend red onion Roasted corn, chopped cilantro, and shredded lettuce. So that's all that was in your burrito. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a pretty big burrito. I'm going to get a quick shot. I know you're going at it, but yeah. 